Hello, this is a Grotter and Steinberg 120 centimetres tall, made in 1933. We're always very grateful when we manage to source one of these. It's, it's one of our preferred makes, as I mentioned in other videos. 85 keys, so missing the top three keys. That doesn't matter at all if you're studying. You can do all your grades without those top three keys, but there are perhaps 1% of classical pieces and other pieces written with top three keys. So... There's a name Grotch and Steinweg. It's my preferred logo for Grotch and Steinweg. It's very uh, beautiful, I think, very tasteful. The, these are perfect ivory keys. Um, very slightly yellowing, but really perfect. So just going over the piano to see what sort of work might improve it. And our polisher uh, can certainly improve the case, he says. It has been spray polished, um, but well spray polished. It was actually re reconditioned my Bristol pianos, according to the previous owner. Uh, and apparently, also in the family, they, it was bought for a great-grandparent um, wedding anniversary, sorry, wedding in 1934. This was made in 1933. Uh, and apparently, um, she was the granddaughter of Sir John Stainer, the uh, person who wrote Stainer's Crucifixion. So it has a bit of provenance to it as well. The Grotians are well known for this uh, cross members on the brace back. It's a very, very stable piano, beautifully made. The soundboard, I've not really zeroed in on the back of the soundboard on a Grotian before, so let's have a look. Close grain is what we're looking for. The tone is second to none for the upright pianos, as we'll have a look at in a minute. So it should be very close grain, which I think it is. Now, the piano stayed in the family, but when it was inherited, it was reconditioned by Bristol pianos and I uh, want to just look at a couple of things which show that it's reconditioned. Uh, I've tested the tuning pins by the way and they're very tight which is really important as we've said many times before um, but you can see if you look at the coils here these might look like, like new strings but if you look at this one carefully it's slightly frayed at the top. Now I always encourage our technicians not to not to clean them right to the top but of course they do look like brand new strings then and they tend to fray but that fray can buzz so We'll be doubly careful to check that, but I don't, it's not a problem so far. And you can also see where the coils have been cleaned. Now, there's a rubber that's put on a drill, and uh, then the, you can see where the circular bit here, where it's touched the um, rest plank. So that's a giveaway that they've been reconditioned and not replaced. But you can get a reconditioned piano to look, look as though it's had new strings, and this one hasn't. But it's in extremely good condition. They've obviously regulated the piano too. There's hardly any hammer wear here as uh, original hammers and I'm really pleased to get a Grotchen in original condition. I've said this before on Grotchens because uh, they are so well balanced and we just listen to, well before we listen to the tone just want to look at one more thing and we check the whole piano of course for things like moth and there's none of that. Um, there's an extra spring here, repetition spring for to bring it the jack under more quickly and if you're a technician you'll know that that's also on Beckstein um, apart from the models 5 and 10 all the other Beckstein uprights have this this spring and the older ones I'm talking about not the modern Becksteins so that's a really good idea and does make it repeat faster so it pulls it back under straight away um, so now let's listen to the tone and compare it with other pianos Actually, before doing that, there's a couple of things I'd like to show. Um, that One is the break point, and we've mentioned this before, really good high-quality pianos have good break points. And there's not a lot of difference in tone. Which it shows that if, if your string goes to another part of the soundboard, then obviously matching the tone is difficult. But they've achieved a very good match on this piano. And this other break point... Again, extremely good. So the string, this one's going to this part of the soundboard here, and that note, and this note to a totally different part of the soundboard. So to get a good match between that note and the notes there, and to get them sounding very similar to each other is obviously a great skill to be able to do that. And there's mildew here, as you can see. The piano is slightly damp, um, it's not going to not damage the piano at all, but obviously we've got to deal with that and it's made it slightly stiff.
So if we look at the worksheet that we've prepared for the piano, uh, it says here, lubricate, lubricate action and set touch weight. So you need to lubricate before we set the touch weight. We've talked about touch weight many times recently, so could refer to other videos about that. Um, but we're trying to get an, an even touch weight with 50 grams in the middle, uh, going to 52 grams in the bottom base, 48 in the top treble. Plus or minus two grams is what we manage to achieve normally in terms of uh, accuracy. And that's the same as a modern piano. Uh, notes, extra, sorry, extra positions, we talked about that. The lubricate the action, hammers, balance rail. The, the balance rail is the centre rail. And if we lift the key up, that should fall down very nicely. That one's not too bad. That one stays up. So that's contributing to the touch. That one's falling down. So they're, vary they're varying, really. Some of the sharps are very, very tight. So as we lubricate the central rail, I mentioned on other videos, then that'll reduce the touch weight as well as making it smoother to play. And the hammer hinges also need lubricating. If we press them now, they are coming back. If I push the sustain pedal down, the dampers are well regulated. It's generally quite well regulated, but if we press the sustain pedal down, they stay. If I lift the sustain pedal off, they come back down. So definitely hammers need lubricating. We'll have to take all the all of them off, I, th I think, and just uh, check them, make sure we don't have to change any centre pins as well. So it's quite a lot of work. Now listening to the piano, I'm going to compare it with others and hoping to demonstrate the, the really rich, warm tone that these pianos have. This is a new Feuerich. Yamaha U1G. Knight K10. Grotri and top treble. Feuerich. Yamaha. Knight. Rotary and tenor, Feuerich, Yamaha, Knight. These are all high quality pianos, so each one has something special about them. But top quality pianos like this Grotri and just have something extra special about them. This Forex has a really warm bass because it's a tall piano with long strings. Yamaha. Knight. So that's a Grotri and Steinweg, 120 centimeters tall. Upright piano made in 1933. And we're all so grateful when we get one of these in. There's something about the tone of them. And as a tuner, I'm sure that tuners and technicians will back me up. There's no better design piano of this height. Every way you play it has a delicious tone. At the moment, the action's a bit sluggish because it needs lubricating, but we, we set the action at very as accurately as a new piano, and you won't find any difference in touch in terms of quality of touch. So there's no reason why you should buy a new piano over this. If you like the, the tone of it, uh, then uh, it's just as stable as well. Of course, it needs tight tuning pins, which it has got, and older pianos need restoring, but this one is uh, in extremely good condition, being kept very well, and um, just a delight to play. To say the touch isn't quite right now but we will obviously work on that we're always going to weight it to normally 50 grams in the center 52 in the base 48 in the top treble though if you want it slightly lighter that would be fine as well
Well, thank you very much for listening. If you've got any queries, just write to us, info at robertspianos.com. We're always trying to source these extraordinary German uh, upright pianos. And, and so uh, please ask any questions you like. We'll try and customize pianos for you as well. Um, if you're searching for the ideal toned upright piano, um, there is, don't come any better than this. They're obviously different from each other and probably need to come and try them out. If you're not able to come, then we're very, very happy to, uh, for you to have the piano on trial for a while to see if you like it. And if you don't, then whatever you paid for this one will come off another piano. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much for listening.